Welcome to Jesus Changes Everything, a daily podcast dedicated to providing a fresh look at the ancient and glorious truth that Jesus not only reigns, but is busy about the business of bringing all things under subjection, that celebrates the wonder and the glory that he has been given all authority in heaven and on earth. Isn't God's providence amazing? Our last Monday night study of 2021 was uh, about six weeks of looking specifically at uh, the Lord's Prayer, going through it line by line. We put these up uh, on the R.C. Sproul J.R. website. We open them up on Facebook Live on Monday nights when we do it. We have people come into our home. We share a meal and teach there. And it was just a wonderful thing. And having just finished, what a delight that as we continue in our ongoing series on the Westminster Shorter Catechism, we come today to question 98. Now, before I read that question, let me just remind you in lieu of the new year of what it is we're doing. The Westminster Shorter Catechism was uh, written for us about uh, uh, 450 to 500 years ago uh, by the Westminster Assembly, which was called during the Long Parliament uh, to try to settle disputed matters in the church in England and was adopted by the church in Scotland. Uh, Their confession of faith that they put together, but they not only put together the confession of faith, but they put together a large catechism and a shorter catechism, which were tools to be used to instruct uh, those newly brought into the faith and children through this a series of questions and answers. And there are 107 questions in the shorter catechism, and we've made our way all the way up to number 98 today, which asks, what is prayer? You can see a very basic question. What is prayer? Well, the answer they give is this. Prayer is an offering up of our desires unto God for things agreeable to his will, in the name of Christ, with confession of our sins and thankful acknowledgement of his mercies. If you haven't been listening, one of my common refrains along the way is uh, praise for the Westminster Divines for how elegant and uh, concise they are in writing these answers that it's just packed full of uh, good, sound thinking and and, uh, even uh, kind of uh, spiritual wisdom is another way to put it. Prayer is an offering up of our desires unto God. You know, there's a lot of reason for us to be on guard against treating God like a cosmic bellhop uh, and treating uh, our prayer life as a, uh, you know, calling down to room service to get our wish list uh, fulfilled. There's something very wrong about that perspective. However, you can fall off the other side of the horse. We are invited in our prayers to bring our desires unto God. We're to ask him for the things that we think that we need and even things that we would like. We do this, as the, as the catechism says, for things agreeable to his will. We, we always pray or should always pray as Jesus did. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. If I'm asking uh, for something that in the long run would be harmful for me, my hope is that my father in heaven, who's infinitely wise while I'm foolish, is going to say, no, no, that's not something I'm going to do. So when I come to him in prayer, I'm saying, Lord, this is what I think would be good. Uh, I'm looking at this situation at my friend, uh, and he's having this struggle, and I'm, I'm thinking it would be better if you would uh, solve this problem, if you would alleviate this hardship. He delights in that. He's our father. Jesus didn't say, you know, what father, when the son asks for uh, an egg, uh, gets a snake? Jesus didn't say, my heavenly father's not like that. If, he, uh, if you ask him for an egg, he'll say, what are you bothering me for, kid? No, he delights when we come to him. And that's so important for us to remember. One of the great things about prayer is that it is a uh, emotive reminder of the nature of our relationship. If you want your prayer life to improve, you need to understand that you are his child. 
And you're coming before your Father who loves you. This is why it says we come in the name of Christ. This is why we pray in Jesus' name. Do you understand what that's there for? That's not 10 for good buddy. In Jesus' name means, Lord, I know that apart from the work of Christ on my behalf, I could not even come into your presence. It's because I'm covered by his blood that I know that I'm welcome here. I'm asking these things in Jesus' name, not in my own name. I'm not worthy, but I'm not by myself. You've put me in union with your son. And that's why I'm asking these things. That's why I'm daring uh, to come into your presence. Now, when we come to this next line with confession of our sins, you may forget that they, oh, well, now, now God stops being our father whose lap we crawl into. And now he starts being the judge. God never stops being our father, but he has stopped being our judge. In the sense that every bit of our guilt, every sin that we have committed has already been dealt with legally at the cross of Christ. We come to our Father confessing our sins in celebration of the forgiveness that we have in Christ, which is why we conclude with a thankful acknowledgement of his mercies. Friends, I want us to feel the weight of our sin. But I don't want us to stay under the weight of our sin. I want us to look it as deeply in the eye as we can and then rejoice at the fullness of God's grace and our forgiveness in Christ. I got to tell you, I've been going through a revolution in my prayer life. And a massive part of that has been the influence of my precious wife. I spent decades praying, Lord, make me a better prayer. Lord, make me a better prayer. And he brought me Lisa. And I get to pray with her every morning and every evening and multiple times throughout the day. We'll talk more about prayer as we actually go through the Lord's Prayer and the uh, upcoming questions in the Westminster Shorter Catechism in this segment. But I want you to know, as you're listening, those of you who love the sacred marriage segments, as you should, I do too, uh, there's a connection here between uh, God's blessing of my uh, marriage with Lisa and this blessing of a potent prayer life. It's time once again for our Attenlay segment, and today I'd like for us to consider this little Latin phrase, ex surge domine, ex surge domine, E-X-S-U-R-G-E, new word, D-O-M as in Mary, I, N as in Nancy, I, ex surge domine, which means Arise, O Lord. Now that might seem strange to have an expression that is used in Latin, or excuse me, in theological conversation uh, that simply says, Arise, O Lord. What's the context? And well, that's what I'm about to give you. Uh, Ex Surge Domine is the name given to uh, that papal bull by which Martin Luther was finally and fully excommunicated. It is called Ex Surge Domine, Arise, O Lord, uh, because it is a request in prayer that given by Pope Leo X that God would be pleased to rise up and uh, deal with this problem of Luther. Uh, in the English, it goes on to say something like this, Arise, O Lord, there is a wild boar loose in your vineyard. So it is Pope Leo X uh, praying that God would be pleased to uh, put down this uh, reckless firebrand theologian Martin Luther. Now, 
that's where you'll hear it. That's how you'll see it, Exerge Domine. Uh, that's how it's used in ongoing theological discourse. But I'm going to conclude this very brief segment uh, with a story particularly about this papal bull, this, uh, in terms of the church courts, this legal document uh, declaring that Martin Luther is not a part of the Church of Jesus Christ. As you can imagine, the sending out of this papal bull was not something unexpected as uh, things continued to heat up between uh, the Protestants who were protesting uh, the errors and the corruption in Rome. Uh, Rome was getting more and more frustrated and angry. And they had something of a PR problem on their hands, too, because Luther was becoming increasingly popular. Well, this sort of last uh, weapon that they had, uh, this sort of doomsday weapon, was the ability to declare him outside the faith. And so Luther and his uh, lieutenants were expecting that this is going to come uh, at some point uh, relatively soon. And his lieutenants, knowing Luther's uh, propensity to get, oh, shall we say, a bit bombastic to uh, let his uh, rhetorical cannons loose, uh, they sort of uh, beseeched Luther to make a pledge and a vow uh, not to blow up over uh, this bull when it would come. And Luther... Uh, decided, well, he may be better listen to his uh, friends and his lieutenants and said, all right, look, when this thing comes, if this thing comes, uh, I will not just go completely berserk. I will uh, be discreet. I will be careful in my wording. Uh, I won't uh, throw curses and imprecations against the Pope. Well, lo and behold, the day came that the papal bull is delivered, and sure enough, arise, O Lord, there's a wild boar loose in your vineyard. Uh, the Luther is now excommunicated from uh, the Roman Catholic Church, and Luther decided he needed to respond. Well, how could he respond in a way that was Luther-like without breaking the vow that he made to his uh, lieutenants? Well, Luther actually uh, wrote a letter back to the Pope, Pope Leo X, uh, letting him know exactly what he thought uh, about the papal bull, but doing so without uh, elevated, vitriolic, uh, and violent rhetoric. This is what Luther wrote to the Pope. In essence, this is a paraphrase, but the gist you'll get. He wrote, Dear Pope Leo X, I have received your papal bull, ex surge domine, uh, which purports to uh, declare that I am outside the faith, that uh, Christ is no redeemer of mine. I am currently reading it it is rather it is in front of me as i read it today in the smallest room in my house it is in front of me it will soon be behind me <laughs> now if that doesn't add up to you i ask you a couple of questions what do you suppose is the smallest room in your house. And what do you suppose you would do with a paper that you had disdain for if you were in the smallest room in your house sitting down reading it? <laughs> so Luther managed to keep his vow and to respond just like Luther. Ex surge domine. Arise, O Lord. You've been listening to the Jesus Changes Everything podcast, a production of Dunamis Fellowship, the teaching outreach of Dr. R.C. Sproul Jr. If you've enjoyed this podcast, we encourage you to subscribe 
which you can do at all the usual outlets, to tell your friends, and to spread the word. To learn more about the work of Dunamis Fellowship, please visit rcscrolljr.com and join us next time on Jesus Changes Everything.